سوري طالب الفقه يعني مثلا في في بدايه امره اذا اراد ان يتمكن في الفقه ماذا تنصحون؟ سيدي I have a question when a student of sacred law wants to master the knowledge of sacred law what would you advise؟ يعني واحد لو كان بدا بقراءه المتون ويحب ان يحضر ويحب لكن يحب ان يتمكن في الفقه فما نصيحتكم في From the beginning, the student starts reading the smaller primers or introductory texts. He would love to gain mastery in the knowledge of fiqh. What would your grace advise? Sidi, there's no doubt there's a number of ways that the student can reach this level. And there's no doubt that he would reach this level. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. الأولى أولا وآخرا هو الحرص على التلقي عن الشيوخ. First, in fact, first and last is to be keen to learn from the scholars. The student should be eager to learn from the scholars. ثانيا قال الإمام النووي رحمه الله في مقدمة كتابه المنهاج الحمد لله. Secondly, Imam Nawawi says in the introduction of his book Al Minhaj. الله الذي أعانا أو وفق أو أعانا على التفقه في الدين. All praise is to Allah, the one who assists or facilitates and assists تفقه, gaining knowledge and an understanding of deen, the religion. فقال التفقه وقال التفقه تفعل فيه تكلف وهو أخذ الشيء الفقه شيئا فشيئا. He notes that تفقه is on the verbal form تفعل. In other words, in it. There is some difficulty or effort required, and that is to take fiqh gradually, one level at a time. He should start with the fundamentals before venturing into more advanced knowledge. This is the Rabbaniya, about which Allah says, Be Rabbaniyin, Surah number 3, verse number 79. The fundamentals in terms of fiqh or sacred law refers to the introductory primers, the mutun meant for the beginners. The important issue with regards to introductory primers, Sayyidi, is تدريسا وشرحا وتحشية فالكتاب المخدوم يخدم طالب العلم يعني كتاب المثل المخدوم يخدم طالب العلم في في المعرفة. The first step that the student of sacred knowledge should pursue is to select the primer that scholars have relied upon that they've spent their lifetime and efforts with and they've studied the primers they explained taught and wrote about in commentaries and the like. The well-served book will serve the student of knowledge well. In other words, the well-served book that is the primer will serve the student of knowledge in attaining that knowledge. الأمر الآخر في الكتب المختصرة هو تكرارها وعدم الملل من تكرارها. The other issue with the concise works or monographs is to repeatedly read. and not to grow tired and bored of reading and studying them. Reading them with scholars in revision and study. Something interesting we've heard about our master, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Ali al-Khattib, may Allah preserve him, is that he read the introductory primer, Safina to Najah, with his teachers about 40 times. The basic primer, Safina to Najah, is considered to be among the most basic. لكن الشيخ محفوظاته سبحان الله التي أسسته يعني في في السفينة وغير ذلك أهلته لأن يكون حافظا في المذهب يعني. But the sheikh's memorized texts, subhanallah, gave him a foundation, like the Safina and others, gave him a foundation and prepared him to be a hafiz in the madhab. 
بمسائل المذهب لانه صار عنده دربه او لا ما يعتني به طالب العلم يعني في المتن الاول هو اتقان حفظ التعريفات واتقان حفظ ما امكنه من قيود المساله ان لا يفوتها The first type of focus in a primer that the student should concern himself with is to master the memorization of the fundamental definitions and then mastery of the memorization of what he is able to in terms of the quyud or limitations of a particular issue so as to not overlook them the basics يعني المتن ما بيكون جامع في الغالب لجميع القيود فيحفظ المتن ويدقق في معانيه وفي منطوقه وفي مفهومه هذا الاساس Since a primer usually does not cover all the principles or quyud of the issues he should memorize the primer master its meanings its apparent meanings and implied or inferred meanings this would be his foundation ثم ينتقل الى الشروح ليزيد من حفظ القيود الاتيه على هذا المتن Then he should progress to the explanatory notes or shurah to expand his knowledge of the basic principles found in the primer in question. One of the most important matters is to know the precautions and limitations of these principles, the muhtarazat of those quyud. فلا يفوت طالب العلم يعني التعرف على صوره المساله الاصليه منطوقا ومفهوما ثم التعرف على القيود ثم التعرف على محترزات هذه القيود. The student must not neglect the knowledge of the basic conceptualization of a particular issue, the apparent and inferred meanings thereof, then the quyud or restrictions and limitations, and then the precautions around those restrictions and limitations. لا تم لطالب العلم التعرف على المصطلح، التعرف على منطوق النص ومفهوم النص والقيود وما يخرج بها فقد تم له العلم كله يعني في في معرفه الفن when a student learns the mustalahat the technical jargon or nomenclature like mantuq an-nas mafhum an-nas the quyud or restrictions and what those restrictions preclude then that student has attained all the basic knowledge of that subject هذا كله اذا انضم الى التكرار الذي ذكرناه سيدي لا شك ولا ريب انه يوافق ما ذكرتم قبل قليل اذا all of this when added to what we mentioned earlier sadi there is no doubt that the student would reach what you have mentioned a moment ago سؤلت الف مساله عاد في متن المراقي فلم تجب فيعني قد تودع من هذا الطالب That's why if you were asked a thousand questions about the Matnul Maraqi and you don't answer them then you can say goodbye to this student. هذه سيدي يعني اهم الامور التي يعتني فيها الطالب في دراسه المتون الصغيره. These sadi are the most important matters which a student should be concerned with in studying the basic primers. ثم يرتقي بعدها الى متن اخر الى متن اخر الى متن اخر اهم ما يؤكد يعني فهم الطالب لهذا المثل بعد ذلك هو تدريسه. Thereafter, the student may progress to another primer, then another primer, then another. The most important way to reinforce the understanding of the student of this primer after that stage is to teach it. فالتدريس هو محك العلم حقيقة وهو موضع اختبار الطلاب. Teaching is the true test of knowledge in reality. It is the place where the student is put to the test. فالواحد منا إذا قرأ أي كتاب وأي فن وهو يقرأ وهو يقرأ أنا أشبه يعني طالب العلم المبتدئ الذي يظن نفسه عالما من غير Someone who just reads books, any subject and reads and reads. I compare such a beginner student who thinks of himself as a scholar without actual lessons with the scholars. التدريس تماما سيدي كمن يحب الانشاد فيسمع المنشدين ففي باطنه يكون ينشد كان صوته كصوتهم وان لحنه كلحنهم This one is like the person who loves sung poetry so he loves sung poetry 
he listens to the artists and then sings within himself. And to himself, he sounds as though he sings just like them, that his voice sounds like theirs, and that his tune is exactly like theirs. لكن لو قدر له ان اطفئنا المسجل وسمعنا صوته <تصفيق> لاختلف الامر تماما However if he were to be recorded and play back the recording and listen he would hear that his voice is not like theirs and the matter would become very different and he would attain a very different perspective كذلك طالب العلم وهو يقرا الكتب ويستمتع بالمعاني الفقهيه والعلل يشعر نفسه هو بالنسبة لنا ابن حجر كأنه بالنسبة لكم كأنه مثلا الكمال بن الهمام وهو يقرأ يو... Similarly a student then reads books and enjoys some of the deeper understandings of fiqh and concepts like hidden defects or ilal and then he starts thinking that he's like ابن حجر or كمال ابن الهمام may Allah be pleased with him يظن نفسه هكذا لأنه يظن أنه يفهم لكن في الحقيقة إذا ال خرج الأمر عن حديث النفس إلى الحديث المنطوق ظهر قصور طالب العلم وظهر الفرق ما بينه وبين حديث نفسه الذي تم So he reads thinking that he's just like that thinking that he understands the issues but in reality if the matter went beyond self-talk to the actual spoken word then the defects of the student will be exposed and the disparity between his self-talk and reality will be apparent يجب على طالب العلم أن يكرر محفوظه وأن يكرر تعلمه وأن يشارك بمذاكرة ما يقرأ مع الطلاب. It is therefore a must for students to repeatedly revise what was learned and memorized. He should connect with other students so they may study together what was read with the students. حتى لا يبقى العلم حديث النفس وحبيسا في النفس يظن نفسه أنه اكتفى به وأنه حققه بل لابد أن ينطق به. So as to not leave room for self-talk and confining himself to his own thoughts and leaving his knowledge within, thinking that he's got it and he's understood, rather he should verbalize it. Giving expression to knowledge is half of knowledge itself. And perhaps it could be even more than that, that is to express it well. تأتي الإشكالات على هذه العبارة من السائلين و... ويستشكل طالب العلم سواء السامع أو المتكلم وقت الكلام يصبح هو يدرك من نفسه أنه لا يأتي بالإيه بالفهم الصحيح للمسألة Thereafter, they could problematize or critique his expression with the others They can all critique it, the one listening and the one speaking At the time of speaking, he can perceive that he does not have a thorough grasp of the issue فيحاول يعيد ويكرر الى اخره then he can try and try again and exhaust his efforts until he gets it طالب العلم بيستفيد من النطق بالمساله والحوار والمذاكره والتدريس بيستفيد انه يستطيع ان يبني في نفسه قدره على التعبير السليم المناسب للمخاطب وان تكون عبارته دقيقه فقهيه وفي الوقت نفسه يعني سهله على المخاطب ف he can then try and try again and the student can benefit from expressing the issue with dialogue, study, revision and teaching. These are all ways in which he can express the knowledge that he's acquired. He can benefit by developing the ability to give expression to the issue in a comprehensive manner and in a sound manner that would be sound in speech. His expression should be correct in terms of sacred law while at the same time being suitable to the addressee in question. He will attain the knowledge. As I mentioned before, the benefit in teaching. May Allah preserve you, you are more knowledgeable than I of that. That knowledge is not confined to self-talk because its function is to be conveyed and to reach. فهذا أمر آخر الأمر بعد ذلك This is a different matter entirely After that يعني أنا أنصح طالب العلم إذا أراد أن يشعر بجزء من التمكن يعني من نفسه أن ينتقل بعد درجة بإرشاد الشيوخ إلى القراءة في بعض كتب الفتاوى المختصرة 
After that, I advise the students of knowledge, if they want to attain a portion of mastery by themselves, is to then move to the next stage under the guidance of the scholars to read some of the concise classical fatawa works. The benefit of that is when one reads the question, at the time of reading the question, the response or the answer is not really clear. You'll find that the question isn't very clear either. But that's to me. I'm like a beginner in sacred knowledge. You'll find that the senior muftis, they will answer the question and clarify the question at the same time. The student thus perceives that there is knowledge even in the application of how the mufti understands and directs the questioner. He will also benefit from the answer. He will also benefit from the answer by way of seeing how the answer was extrapolated. Where did the Mufti reference the answer from? Whether he responded based on the apparent wording or the inferred understanding, or if there was a hidden defect, or external evidence, or principle that the student will thus see the application of extrapolation. He will be able to see the differences of opinion in the school. He will see practical extrapolation of the issues and how the substantive laws are extended. He will see whether the evidence is from the expressions of the ashab of the madhab or from the fuqaha or from a particular from a particular book and how to draw from them and then branch off. This is about reading concise fatawa, not lengthy research pieces. That would be another stage. By reading these concise classical works of Fatawa, the student can reinforce himself by reading the questions, trying to answer them, and comparing his answers to that of the Mufti, and then see the differences or the problems and shortfalls within his response compared to that of the Mufti. He will often find that from the defects that resulted, that he overlooked, when he understands the question, he would understand the question and he would know where the place of the answer is. In other words, how to find and locate the answer. He will find that many of his mistakes and oversights were as a result of not mastering the basics, the limitations, the restrictions of the Masail from the ground up. So the shortfalls or mistakes in his answer would often come from not mastering the basics, the limitations, the Qiyud. Imam Nuruddin Ali Zayyadi, the Shaykh of the Shafi'iyya in Egypt, may Allah have mercy on him, it's Zayyadi with a fatha on the Zay. When he gave a ruling in one issue of the issues of Ijara, whether the particular Ijara in question was valid or not, 
فافتى فيها فطار بعض السامعين لهذه الفتوى الحاسدين للشيخ نور الدين الزياري رحمه الله من طلاب العلم واهل المشيخه يعني He gave a ruling and some of those listening to his fatwa who were jealous of the sheikh and they were students of knowledge but they had ulterior motives. فطار بهذه الفتوى انها من خطا الزياري ونشر هذه الفتوى عند بعض مشايخ الازهر. They said that in this fatwa of Az-Zayadi he made a mistake. The fatwa then spread among the scholars of the Azhar. و يعني انجر بعض مشايخ الازهر خلف هذا المتفقه فاتهم الزيادي بانه اخطا. Some of the scholars of the Azhar were dragged behind this critic accusing Zayadi of making a big error. وكان الدليل عند هذا المتفقه على خطا الامام الزيادي رحمه الله نص النووي في المنهج. The critic's proof that Imam Az Zayadi made a mistake was in fact the words of Imam Al Nawawi in the Minhaj. عبارة النووي في المنهج. The words of Imam Nawawi we in the Minhaj. فطار الأمر في الأزهر. الشيخ المذهب يخطئ ولا يقيم الفتوى في المذهب والمسألة منصوصة في المنهج. The matter went about in the Azhar University that the Sheikh of the Madhab made such a big mistake and that he doesn't know the fatwa in the Madhab while the issue is contained within the text of the Minhaj. When this matter reached Imam Az-Zayadi and he heard the accusation, he was annoyed. and reproached the critic who was ignorant in the matter as well as the scholars who who he dragged behind him وقال لهم مسألة المنهاج معروفة معلومة محفوظة لكنها مقيدة في جميع الشروح he said to them the issue is in the minhaj it is well known and understood but it is also further qualified through its commentaries ومن هنا افتى الزياد بحرمة الفتوى من المنهاج Because of this, Imam Az-Zayadi forbade giving fatwa from the Minhaj. لمن لمن لا يتقن قيود المنهاج المأخوذة من كلام الشرح. For who though? For those who did not master the limitations, the قيود of the Minhaj, which we found in the words of the commentators, the شرح. قال لا يفتى بما في المنهاج لا لان الذي في المنهاج ليس معتمد لان الائمه قد يطلقون في مواضع التقييد اعتمادا على ان طالب العلم لا يقرا العلم وحده ولكن يقراه على الشيوخ يتابع الشروح والشروح زيلت في الحواشي والحواشي في التقريرات وفي كتب فتاوى تبين وتوضح فالعلم يعني He said no one should give fatwa according to the minhaj not because it's not relied upon work the mu'tamad but because the scholars at times they mention something as though it is unqualified while they are in reality qualified they did so relying on the reader or student to not only draw knowledge from one source but many and to take from the scholars and commentaries and fatawa all of these clarify and explain each other الكلية جامعة وليس إيه يعني وليس فردا يعني أو كتابا واحدا يجمعهم. So knowledge is a holistic approach and not atomistic. It's taken from a plethora of sources and not confined to one book. الله أعلم. فهذه الأشياء يعني القراءة على الشيوخ أساس. Allah knows best. So these things, reading to the scholars and with the scholars. is a foundation having prolonged benefit from the company of the scholars this is a foundation gradually moving up from the basic texts and for the student not to be fatigued from studying them not to be fatigued from studying the basic works that is a foundation الامر الثالث تحقيق قراءه هذه المتون سواء بالمصطلحات منطوق العباره مفهوم العباره القيود الاخرى ومحترزات هذه القيود the third matter is تحقيق 
or reinforcing reinforcing their knowledge by the reading of these primers whether through learning the common nomenclature the apparent and inferred meanings other limitations qiyud and the muhtarazat the precautions and restrictions of those qiyud al amr al akhar dhakarna an yudhakir hadha al amr wa yaj'al al ilm hadis al nafs wa hadith al nafs bal yantaq bihi amam shaykhihi amam tullab amam وإذا قسم الله له أن يدرس بعض المبتدئين يتدرب ولا يكون مفتيا لكن يتدرب على حل العبارات وهكذا فهذا خير وحسن The other matter that we mentioned is that he should give expression to his knowledge that he should not limit his knowledge to self talk he should talk about it and express it in front of his teachers with other students and when Allah facilitates for him to start teaching others beginners as a form of training not that he's a mufti He is training his expression, and this is good. But of course, with the guidance of the scholars. The other matter was to read the concise classical fatawa works after that, and to read these primers uh, as a basis after which he would read those fatawa works. Allah knows best, Sadie.